Hastings. GigantHastings.com. Canberra went to Melbourne for a doubleheader against the Mustangs, hungry for points as they tried to stay within striking distance of a playoff spot. The Saturday game came down to a penalty shootout, and despite a tough first half to the year, the Mustangs showed they can't be ridden off just yet. Canberra gave Jamie Burke too much time and space in front of their net, and he punished them. Oh, there's a goal the Mustangs. Good play. They take the lead, Jamie Burke. Victor Gibbs Shadeen doesn't always lose control of the puck, but when he does, he gets an assist. He shoots and scores! 2 nothing Mustangs. Welcome back, Jeff Grant. Late in the second, Canberra opened their account when Kelly Joffrey cleaned up a rebound. They had lost four out of their last five games. And it's tough to make the playoffs if you lose to teams below you on the ladder. And after mounting pressure, Melbourne cracked midway through the last period for the game-tying goal. It's puck still in the crease. They dig at it. They and did. scores. Dave Dunwoody drew a penalty. On the ensuing power play, his team would have the chance to take the lead for the first time. They put the puck in the net. New import Jordan Peddle thought he had his first goal, but it was called back. He's not in the crease at the moment unless he's... Um, he's not in the crease. He's not. No, There's no kicking goal. motion. To me, it's a clean goal. Stalemate. Penalty shootout. Jamie Burke's deke was good. Scott Pitt. Cool under pressure. He scored with a nice move and went top corner. Corey Banfield tucked it in Alexei Toivonen's five hole. Mustangs goalie Fraser Carson only just managed to keep Kyle Mariani's shot out. It gave Vadim Vyasov the chance to finish it. Back and scores. Mustangs will take the win. You know, this is uh, one of those crucial games I feel like at this point in the, uh, in the season uh, to get on a roll. And you know, those close ones, we get to start learning how to win uh, down the stretch and hopefully get in uh, the finals. Here in Perth, the Thunder played host of the Newcastle North Stars. Just three points separate the two teams at the top of the ARHL standings. And the home side were hoping to bridge the gap and reclaim the top spot. Here are the highlights. Saturday's game saw the Thunder open up their scoring account first, with Finnish import Tony Kuskari putting a wrist shot past Dane Davis. In the second period, import Alex Hudson didn't let a big hit from North Star's Robert Malloy put him off his game, with the Californian native managing to bag himself an unassisted goal and putting the home team up 2-0. The visitors, however, weren't going to let Thunder have all the fun, with North Star's top point scorer, Geordie Woodrick, waging in for his first goal of the night. Luke Moffat was able to take full advantage of the momentum swing in North Star's favour, with the star import finding his way past Thunder's netminder, Mark Guggenberger. The league's top goal scorer wasn't quite finished, and less than two minutes later, Moffat was able to follow up with his second goal of the night. Woodrick finished off the North Star's late push with an empty netter, which meant the North Star's skated away with a 4-2 victory over the Perth Thunder. Adelaide's weekend got off to a bad start when Charlie Smart let a speculative shot squeak in short side. It was a first period blitz from Melbourne. On the back of that questionable hit came their third goal. Adelaide wanted a penalty, but they got this. Second period, the lead stretched to 4-0 when Jason Backlig found space to wind up and let rip. The Melbourne's Cass Delsar went after Adelaide's Darren Corstens. They both got two minutes for roughing. It wasn't until the third period the adrenaline got on the scoreboard and started to show signs of life. There was some bad blood brewing. Watch the aftermath to their second goal. Tyler Grove celebrates with a surprise straight left. He got a 10-minute misconduct for that. Then it was Andrew White with the takedown on Liam Webster. Explosive tempers all over the ice as Melbourne took the win. We just couldn't find anything through their defensive side. So it's a bit of a bummer. We were trying to get up to the point, but it just wasn't getting through. They were doing well blocking shots, and we couldn't get through to the middle. Meanwhile, half the Bears roster had a goal as they hammered the dogs in the Sydney derby. All three Ice Dog goals came in a 45-second span late in the game. Canberra had the chance for revenge after Saturday's shootout loss to the Mustangs. They got the first two goals. It could have been 3-0. Instead, it was 2-1 at the end of the first. Vadim Vyasov getting Melbourne on the scoreboard in style. Oh, yeah. He scored! Forced through by Vadim Vyasov. What a goal! End-to-end -end stuff. 
Four minutes into the second, a couple of former Ice Dogs connected to give Canberra a 3-1 lead. Cutting in, leaves it behind, they shoot and it's gone! Oh. Done, Woody! Oh. Beautiful play by Tyler Kubara there, set that one up. Then early in the third, Dunwoody struck again, adding a power play goal to extend the lead. Canberra still on the offensive, but this ended with an awkward crash into the boards at high speed before Melbourne switched the momentum and got the next two goals to give themselves a fighting chance. And they score! Banfield! It's a one-goal game. Ten minutes left, a one-handed Stephen Blunden caught them napping and poke-checked a sneaky goal. If you thought that was a goaltending lapse, in just his second game, Alexei Toivonen got lost at sea and gifted Melbourne a lifeline. Lucky for him, his team held on for the win. For the second night in a row, Thunder were first to open up their scoring account when alternate captain Andrew Cox found the back of Dane Davis's net. But unfortunately for the home side, the joy was short-lived with North Star import Luke Moffat picking up from where he left off the night before and just 30 seconds later equalised and tied things up at 1-1. Thunder's power play unit took full advantage of a slashing call against North Star's Matt Wattini with Finnish import Tony Kluskari netting his second goal of the weekend. However, with the clock weighing down the second period, North Star's Bo Taylor was able to even things up at two apiece. Thunder had to wait until halfway through the third period before their import line were able to break the tie with French-Canadian Luc Sanyeur getting his first goal of the weekend. Things really start to heat up in the third period with North Star's Rob Stark being slapped with a roughing call and Thunder's power play were sure to cash in with Californian native Hudson finding the team's fourth goal of the night. Despite the North Stars putting together yet another late push, their third goal of the night from Woodrick wasn't enough to get them past the Thunder and the home side took away the 4-3 victory. After some old time hockey on the Saturday, keep your head up on the Sunday. Melbourne's first goal came on the power play, a rebound, it wasn't pretty, neither was this gathering in front of the Adelaide bench. This backhand may have caught a deflection, otherwise it should not be allowed to go five-hole, 2-0 Melbs. The physical play continued, then with three minutes left, Adelaide pulled their goalie. The gamble paid off. But not for a second time, as Melbourne left SA with all six points. I don't think we played that bad, to be honest with you. It was just, yeah, we, we didn't capitalise when we had the chance. They capitalised when they did, and uh, takes a lot of momentum uh, away from, from our side. Melbourne able to get the win despite the absence of their leading scorer, Matt Armstrong, who is out suffering from a case of gastro. Remember, Saturday, July 11, the ECSL charity all-star game is in Sydney. Spider-Man vs. Batman. Check the Facebook page for more info. This is AIHL Power Week. Thanks for watching.